Okay, in the next three videos we're going to be looking at welfare reforms and how welfare reforms have been used in recent budgets to try and get back people back into the workforce. So just be mindful that a lot of the, um, just in review, response to the last video, there's been two sort of reviews conducted in relation to our tax system. Um, so in 2008-2010 they performed the Henry Tax Review. And basically what that did is it came up with around 138 recommendations that we could use to promote the efficiency of our tax system. And that sort of was where they came up with a lot of the ideas like instant write-offs for small businesses, um, abolishing a lot of inefficient taxes like payroll tax, um, increasing superannuation to try and make sure that we had enough money for future generations so the government didn't have to support so much in pensions. Um, unfortunately, the government only implemented around 10% of the 138 recommendations, uh, but hopefully they continue to be implemented over the next few years. Then again in 2015, the government in released a white paper basically discussing what they think the tax mix should look like to try and promote economic growth and efficiency. So within that white paper, they had um, they targeted multinational companies that were shifting their profits offshore. Um, they talked about how the tax system was inefficient compared to many tax systems around the world and how it could be simplified to improve efficiency. There was too, many, too much paperwork around a lot of our company taxation laws, um, which was making it hard for firms to stay competitive and was stifling investment as well. So just be mindful that they have had a comprehensive review of our taxation system. What we're going to talk about now is welfare reforms. So when we're looking at changes in welfare, what we're looking at is changes to the direct cash benefits provided by the government's neediest individuals so they can purchase basic goods and services and enjoy a reasonable standard of living. So income support comes in a whole range of ways. It's generally means tested so that only those who are in genuine need um, receive the income support. But income support can include age pensions, new start allowance for the unemployed, disability support pensions, youth allowance for young workers, uh, childcare subsidies, and a whole range of other things that affect people's income. Um, and what we're going to talk about now is changes that have occurred in a lot of these, mainly designed to promote efficiency um, in the allocation of resources. So when we're looking at welfare reform, the aim, aim of welfare reform is to change the system of cash payments or direct benefits to try and promote economic efficiency, productive capacity and aggregate supply. So there are changes made to the cash payments or direct benefits given to people to try and promote efficiency and our aggregate supply potential. The idea is to provide financial incentives for people to join the labour force or to participate in the labour force and provide disincentives for some people that stop engaging in work by reducing their welfare or finding other ways to re-engage them with the workforce. It's also about making sure that benefits are only for those most in need, so that relates to um, things like disability support only going to those with genuine disabilities so that we can achieve fiscal consolidation and we don't have too extravagant expenditure um, on welfare, which is around 40% of our total, um, total government expenditure. It's also about simplifying the welfare system so citizens have a clear understanding of when they're eligible for welfare and when they're not. So it's about promoting participation, stopping the incentives associated with not getting back to work and making sure welfare is designed for those most in need as well as simplifying the process for um, recipients. Australia has an over-generous welfare system and the problem with that is it can lead to a poverty trap and that basically is a situation where citizens prefer to be on assistance rather than updating their skills and that may be because um, there's a too small a gap between the amount of money you would get if you're on welfare and potentially having a low-skilled job. So they, while they might help equity in the short term, the poverty trap is referring to the fact that in the long term they become less skilled and technically efficient if the welfare system is too generous and that could potentially harm equity um, as more and more citizens rely on transfer income because they never bothered to develop the skills they needed to be successful in the workforce. In terms of the interaction between the tax and transfer system, this relationship is really important and one of the problems and one of the reasons we've needed welfare reforms in Australia is that... Um, the problem in Australia is that when you're in, on income support, that income support is reduced really quickly once you start getting a job or re-enter the workforce. So, for example, a stay-at-home mother, for example, you know, maybe on four hundred dollars a week welfare, for example. And the problem is, you know, she might be thinking of getting back to work, but the high effective marginal tax rate prevents her from going back to work. So she might find that, you know, she does the maths and she might be on thousand dollars a week for her job. But she's going to lose her family tax benefits, so that might lose $400 for her. She might also have to pay um, childcare. So what can end up happening is she's only slightly better off, or potentially not even better off at all, 
um, from getting back to work. So when we're talking about the interaction between the tax and transfer system, it's important that, there's, that we're providing an incentive for people to go back to the work and our tax and transfer system is not set up in a way that discourages people from re-entering the workforce because they're not going to be much better off financially. So this can happen to also happen to those on new start allowance. As they enter the labour force, the amount of welfare they get will decrease and it can become optimal to work less hours with the way that welfare is structured. As I said, this can lead to a poverty trap where people decide to remain on welfare rather than getting back to work. So the interaction between the welfare and tax system can lead to a less efficient allocation of resources because unfortunately it can mean that more people are discouraged from making a meaningful contribution. So it leads to what we call perverse incentives or the wrong incentives and some people will work less hours or choose to remain out of the workforce because it's not financially worth it for them. Okay, This can cause problems during periods of strong economic growth because a lot of people are choosing not to participate in the workforce it can lead to tighter labour markets because we have lower participation and skill shortages. So it's important that the government is thinking of ways to boost participation so that we can reduce inflationary pressures and promote more sustainable growth by boosting participation. Thank you.